Okay, so back in our project here, we had started building this gallery controller before we created the data layer for application and ran our first database migration. So we had decided that we were going to have a gallery index where we would actually use the gallery index view model to display some images and the ability to post a search query on this page. So let's go ahead and before we actually use our, our backend here and some services to either push or pull our own data onto the page here, let's just go ahead and create a sort of mock, some mock data that we can use just, just to demonstrate how the controller and the view model and the view are all working together. So you can see that anytime we have this gallery index model, we need to supply some images as a list of our gallery image object and um, potentially a, a search query here that the user could use in like a search form. And so what I'll do is probably just have three sort of mock images that we can then pass to our image list. So we'll say images is equal to some image list that we'll actually go ahead and create. So we'll do that just above here. Our image list is equal to a new list of gallery images. Oops, and we don't need the semicolon here. And here we can just go ahead and build that out. So we'll specify a title. And let's just go ahead and build out three images for our sort of mock implementation. So our first image will have a title of say like hiking trip or something. The URL we will provide in just a little while here. Created, we can have datetime.now and then tags. We'll just mock out a quick like hiking image tags collection that we will specify above here. So this will be a new list of image tags. And let's go ahead and create another set of tags here. And we'll call this city image tags. And so what we'll do is we'll create two more gallery images in our sort of dem demonstration here. So we have one for hiking trip, one title we'll say, you know, on the trail. We'll provide a URL here in a moment. And again, we'll, we'll hook it up with the hiking image tags. And then for our third gallery image, we'll just title it downtown. And for the tags here, we can provide the city image tags. Okay, so if we head back up here into our tags, what we'll do is we'll just have some sort of mock objects here. We'll say tag one is a new image tag. And the description will be like adventure and we'll make the ID zero. And I'll create just three different tags here. So we'll have adventure, and then maybe we'll have one called urban and we'll create a third tag here and we'll make the description like New York with an ID of two. So these are just sort of mock objects again that will eventually be provided back by our own data. And then we'll have a service that actually, you know, handles passing these, these particular instances around. So for now, we'll just go ahead and create three mock tags with uh, descriptions and IDs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold these. And then we have a new image list here that has three gallery images in it, each with a title and empty URL for the moment created on of datetime.now and one of our image tag collections. So one thing that we forgot to do here is we'll say hiking image tags dot add tag one and then city image tags dot add range and we'll just go ahead and add range tag two and tag three. And here we need to say new list of image tag. Okay, so now we have a collection of hiking image tags that contains this single tag here, adventure, 
and then our city image tags contain the urban tag and the New York tag as well. And then in each of our gallery images, I assign one of these collection of tags to map to this um, tags property that is on our each of our gallery image objects. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse each of these. So we'll have an image list of three gallery images, each of which should have all their properties except for the URLs. And then we have our view model here in which this images property gets set to the image list that we just constructed. And our search query will just make an empty string for the time being. Now let's go ahead and again, just for demo purposes, fill out the URLs here. So we'll provide some URLs now that you know won't be hosted ourselves but will be hosted remotely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to Pexels and we'll just find a few images to use very briefly. So I'll just search for hiking and we'll scroll around until we find a nice image that we might want to use. So this one looks pretty good. If we select download we can see the URL for this particular file. You definitely don't want to uh, have a reference to someone else's hosted image if you're using it on your own website. Again, this is just strictly for demo purposes. So we'll go ahead and paste that in our URL here. And shortly after we demonstrate this, we will be replacing it with our own images that the user can then upload to our application. So then we have another hiking image, so we'll go back and just select something else. Likewise, we'll get the URL for this image. And then we have one more image to grab here. And we'll go ahead and grab this URL. All right, very good. So let's go ahead and save this. And so we have a sort of mocked out index action here. Well, the view model that we'll actually pass down is mocked out. So let's go ahead and create our view now. So I'll open up the Solution Explorer and just go ahead and pin it. And then in Views, I'm going to open this up and we'll collapse home. I'm just going to right click here and add a new folder. And we'll call this Gallery. And then in gallery, we'll add a new item and we'll make it an MVC view page called index.cshtml. I like to just create a vanilla view without having Visual Studio scaffolded out because sometimes it provides more than we actually need. And so at the top of our view here, we'll be using razor syntax to specify the model that we'll be using on this view. So we'll do that with a spiral model with lowercase m and then here we need to provide the actual model so we'll go into our models namespace and then gallery index model will be what we're using here so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a simple div of class container body content and then we'll make a div of gallery content and then what I'm going to say is just at for each of our image in capital M model dot images we are going to create a new div of class gallery dash image and we'll just have this be an empty div for the time being now we need to go define some of these classes in our CSS so we can do that if you expand this www root directory here this is where all the static files for our application are getting served up from and then we have this CSS folder that contains our site.css. So you can see that we have just a minimal amount of CSS defined for us here. We could create a new to specify some custom CSS, but in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and create it in this file. So I just need to define a few new classes here. We have this gallery content and gallery image. The remaining classes here are coming from uh, what's been defined in our application already. Note also that because we use the template, we also have Bootstrap available to us. So let's go ahead and create a gallery content and gallery image class. And what I'm gonna say here for gallery image is we'll specify some padding of say eight pixels. And then for our, and then we'll specify a default background color of white, a tiny border radius, of two pixels, we'll display inline block, and we'll specify an explicit width and height. 
of 300 pixels. I'm gonna give just a little bit of margin as well. Maybe we'll make this 12 pixels and position relative. And I'm just gonna supply a little bit of box shadow on this element. Fairly uh, transparent here. Okay, so let's kind of specify sort of the little container that each of our images will be contained in. And then our gallery content container will specify a bit of padding as well. And we can make additional modifications to that if we need. So let's go back into our view. So we now have definitions for both of our uh, CSS classes that we're implementing here. And then we have a for each loop where we're actually looping through each of the images um, that will pass, you know, whatever model gets past this, this view. And though we may not want to put it out on the screen, you know, in the final application, just to kind of demonstrate how this is working, we can also just throw out the title, we'll wrap in a span, onto the page two, just to show some of that data and then maybe in another for each, we can say var tag in image.tags. We can create an unordered list. Oops, and the ULs obviously need to go outside of this for each. Of our tag.description. And so now we have a sort of nested for each loop here. So we'll have the set of gallery images and then on each of those images, for each of that images tag, we'll put the tag description out to the page as well. Again, just kind of a simple version to demonstrate how we can get this working. Let's go ahead and build our solution. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a commit as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just fire up IS Express. And we don't have a link in our app yet to the gallery controller. So we can just at the URL provide slash gallery. And so you can see already that we are getting three of our images out to the page here. So we don't actually have the images themselves. We're getting the tags out and then it looks like we have a slight issue here with a title. So let's go ahead and fix that. Here we need to provide a spiral for image.title. If we go back and refresh, now we can see the titles. So let's go ahead and get these images out to each of their sort of containers here. And the way that I'm going to do that is provide some inline CSS here on our gallery image div. So we'll provide a background image and set the URL equal to at image.url. Okay, so we'll save that and go ahead and refresh our page. So now we're getting an unresized version of each of the images. What we'll do in the future for our own images is actually implement um, some image magic here to actually crop the images that a user would upload to their application. But for now, we could also just, you know, resize this using a little bit of CSS. It's not ideal because the user still is actually accessing that large version of the image and then just getting it styled down to size. Um, but let's go ahead and do that for now anyway. Back in our CSS, in our site.css, what I can do is say background size about 100%, background repeat, no repeat, and background position center and so if we refresh the page now you can see that our images aren't square so we're not actually cropping them but they are now fitting within each of our containers we could say uh, if we wanted just it to look a little bit perhaps nicer without doing any actual cropping here we could say 100% 100% and then if I refresh, 
Now the image is sort of sized to the entire cell, but you can see that there's some distortion going on as the image is stretched. There's perhaps even a better way, rather than do background size 100% at all, we could just say cover. And if we refresh now, we can see that the images just essentially fill the maximum amount of area they have in their div. Um, of course, some of the image gets cut off, but we don't have any distortion. And what I'd like to do now is maybe to put a little bit of just a tiny border around each of the image containers. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to nest the gallery image in a gallery image container. And the gallery image container will be what contains many of the properties that are currently on our gallery image. So for instance, the padding, background, border radius, display, height, width, margin, position, and box shadow. And so now this padding, if we nest a gallery image div inside of our container should provide us with that little bit of white space around each of the images. So let's go back into our index view and just go ahead and wrap this div in a div of class gallery image container. And then I'll move the span with the title and the list of tags outside of the container. And I'll just clean up some of this a little bit. And just double check our CSS, go ahead and save this. And now go ahead and refresh the page. And we're not actually seeing our images here, so let's see what the issue is. Ah, we need to specify actually a height and a width on our gallery image as well. So we'll make these 280 by 280 pixels. And so yeah, we get the images out to their containers now. So the styling isn't perfect, but it just gives us kind of a, a very quick and dirty starting point. Next thing that I'll do is go back into index here and to our gallery content, I will also make this a row. So just kind of like a bootstrap row here. And then now that we understand that we are indeed passing the title and um, the collection of tags out with our model, I'll go ahead and remove those as well and then refresh the page. And this should give us kind of more of a, a gallery look here. Okay, so that's looking all right so far. In the next video, we will actually dive right into um, developing a service layer to allow us to query our own database for images, as well as provide a simple form to allow a user to upload their own images to storage.